going to talk a little bit about blame. Um, but before I tell you what blame is, I think it's important to first share what it isn't. So basically, uh, if you can, ask yourself um, if, if any of these apply or sound familiar. I keep attracting people who have commitment issues. All the good men are taken. My marriage would be a whole lot better if my partner didn't work so much. If only my wife would be more passionate in the bedroom, our relationship would be fun and happy again. If you always feel disappointed in your partner, your husband, your wife, your relationships in general, there's something extremely important that you need to know. The cause of your par uh, problems aren't what you may think. And until you understand what's really happening, it's difficult to find the right solution. When your relationship keeps disappointing you, it's easy to blame the other person. You think, if only he would, or why can't she? Blame creates an control of the situation. I can't change until you do, is the implicit message that you're giving out. The solution uh, is in their partner's hands. That's basically, again, the, the message. Blame separate, separates people from your your beliefs and your right person yet, or that things would be better if you just ended this current relationship and started a whole new one. But here's the truth. Starting over won't solve much, really, and possibly nothing at all. In fact, you'll probably have the same problems again, just with a different person. You'll date another man who's afraid to commit or pulls away when you get close or not dress or talks too much or can't hold down a job. And the reason this is, is whenever you're waiting for something, quote, out there to change in order for you to be happy, you'll be waiting forever because out there isn't necessarily where the problem lies. Now, betrayal and betrayal work aside, I'm talking about um, a little bit more on the other end of the spectrum of betrayal. So um, when I talk about blame, obviously you can blame the hell out of somebody who broke trust with you. You know, I mean, obviously taking responsibility for your role and not showing up and not being present in the, in the relationship at the time, but you can blame the hell out of somebody for stepping out of the relationship that was unacceptable to their core. I'm just talking about uh, when we move on, whether it's rec in reconciliation mode or by our uh, non-reconciliation, um, let's get out of the blame game. Um, please don't get me wrong with this or get it twisted. It absolutely takes two people to work hard to achieve any relationship success. However, as long as you keep pointing the finger at someone else, you'll keep struggling in love. You may get the commitment phobe to marry you, but then he'll be lazy or uh, inconsiderate or as many of you have unf unfortunately experienced, break trust. Your workaholic partner may take a sabbatical, but then you'll find something. Else. It can break down your sense of trust in your partner and replace it with a growing sense of resentment and anger. And if it persists for a long time, um, constant blame, regardless of who does it, um, can kind of be a symbol for an emotional for emotional abuse. <laughs> so blame is just not healthy in any capacity. With all of these things, it would be helpful to take a good look in the mirror because, after all, we do teach people how to treat us. Again, betrayal aside, um, the overall behavior and dynamics in your relationships often come from fears and unconscious beliefs and emotions that are secretly running our lives. I did a, um, I did a fear tree one time and I don't wanna waste my time looking for it now, but, oh yeah, I wasn't even planning on doing this. So, um, and I don't know if you can see it, but basically the roots of the tree is fear and this goes up, uh, feeds our limiting beliefs. Our limiting beliefs feeds um, the twigs, which is our attitudes. And in our attitudes is our behavior and our actions out of the leaves. So um, actually, I, I'm sorry, I, I, um, I created this from, it might've actually been even Debbie who did something, but, so I don't wanna take complete full, um, uh, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I can't think of the word. Uh, I don't want to take from this. Uh, I got it from someone. I just reworded it a little bit myself. But anyways, what I said is fear is one of our biggest motivators. Um, and of course, I do believe Debbie did say this, change the fruit, change the root, or change, yeah, change the root, change the fruit. So we all have these limited, limiting beliefs. And you know what's interesting, and I, and I, and I don't want to digress, and I apologize, but I was just on a podcast the other day, and I was talking about how, you know, what's, what's sad is that oftentimes after betrayal, and I'm completely digressing, so please forgive me, but um, after betrayal, what we do is we attach our own perspective of that betrayal. Um, we, we attach to it. And then when we play that narrative in our mind over and over and over, then it becomes solidified, giving us now something much more to work on to uncover. For instance, Let's just say somebody, uh, you know, on, on D-Day, somebody discovers a betrayal um, and they start yelling, 
Uh, you think I'm that ugly? You think I'm that disgusting to do that? When the next person could say, you think I'm that worthless? You don't think I'm, I mean nothing at all? So basically that's our, that's our perspective, attaching our fears, our core beliefs onto you know, something which 99.9% .9 of the truth or 100% is not even applicable, it's not the truth. But that's the narrative that we connected to giving ourselves a whole nother mountain to have to climb to under, undo um, in our healing journey. Okay, I completely went off on a deep end, so I apologize. Um, <clears throat> anyways, let's get back to blame. Um, until you learn how to um, spot your fears and control them and your narrative and your internal dialogue and turn them from unconscious habits into conscious choices, you won't be able to make permanent changes. Um, they'll pop up again and hide in the guise of a charming liar, a nagging siren. They'll show up when you get angry about an unemptied dishwasher or unwashed children or the trash not being taken out or what have you. So they will run your life, these fears, these, these core insecurities, unless you don't let them. And here's the good news. Because the problem is in here, so is the solution. <laughs> so it might be it, now, um, even though I'm laughing, some of you, some of your shoulders might have just got heavy because you're thinking, oh, my gosh, are you seriously like, you know, um, it might be, feel daunting and depressing to think that the problem you've been experiencing um, in love aren't, aren't, aren't there. They're actually in here. Um, it's easy to beat yourself up, and feel overwhelmed and sad. But the truth is, and actually it's good news, is that because if the solutions um, are right here, you are completely in control to change the dynamics, change the outcome. Okay, all it takes is consciously stepping out of your habitual beha behaviors and mental programming that have been running your life on autopilot until now. So once you do, you'll be able to create a relationship that lasts and deepens over time, and you'll be able to feel happy, happier and more fulfilled in your own life than you've ever been. Again, and this is if you're on the spectrum of reconciliation or not. The moment you shine a light of awareness on how you're creating a specific problem in your life, it's also the moment that you open up the ability to generate new ways to solve these issues. <clears throat> in that moment, you're interrupting your autopilot response. You're disengaging the usual way you react and simply perpetuate a problem. Now, here's why this is especially powerful. When you shift from blaming something or someone else for a problem, you suddenly become made of, motivated to actually do something about it because you actually can, the power is in your hands. You know, when you start seeing yourself as a creator of everything that happens in your life, now, certainly, um, <clears throat> certainly you cannot take, again, I'm, I'm not talking about betrayal. This is more on the spectrum, uh, more up the spectrum um, of when you're more healed. But, um, but once you accept that the things happen in your life, good and bad, um, are, are uh, in a lot of ways who we are, uh, our boundaries, our belief systems, our attachments, our whatever, that's when you can change things. The more you know, the further you go, yada, yada. So this simple shift in mindset and attitude can move mountains in your life. So the way you react to problems in your life has become habitual. In order to break your autopilot reactions, you need new thought pat patterns and positive beliefs. Keep in mind, while it may feel good to release anger by blaming others, it also hurts relationships with those around us. It makes it difficult to, for us to hold people accountable for their actions. Not to mention behind every complaint is a deep personal longing. That longing could be um, a longing for connection, a longing to be understood, or any other unmet need that you may have. Now to the good stuff. How do we acknowledge, address, and stop blame in its tracks? <clears throat> First and foremost, instead of thinking, I feel unsatisfied in this relationship and, and those kinds of narratives, you have to start thinking, we have a problem, so how can I change the way I approach it? This attitude change fosters deeper personal reflection and more, re more responsible on each partner side. So uh, one thing that we can do is talk about expectations right from the get. If you find yourself engulfed in the blame game, it's often because you and your partner have ex implicit expectations about certain things that should be happening in your relationship or ways that your partner should or should not be behaving. It's important to remember that your partner is not a mind reader. They can assume to know what you want, but they won't ever truly know unless you explicitly let them know. Identifying what these expectations are and voicing them to your partner is key to breaking this pattern. A conversation about the, these expectations can help you put the blame game to rest. 
I don't want to digress and I apologize. People always say communication is key in a relationship. Communication is key in a relationship. Yes and no. Um, effective communication is key. And the reason I say that is because everybody talks differently. Um, uh, I won't digress anymore, but just I'll leave it as that. Effective communication, meaning you have to get to know the communication style of the person you're with and speak that language, speak that way to them, just as they need to understand and get to know and learn about your communication style and speak that way to you. You might be, in layman's terms, it's like you might be speaking French, they might be speaking Spanish. You guys have to learn each other's language. Now, certainly you merge and you grow together, you know, but for the most part, we're going to have, we're, we each have fundamental core language differences and, and, um, and wants and needs, and we really need to learn effective communication with our partner. Okay, two, have compassion. As we start to identify our defenses, as well as those of our partner, we get to know them better and understand the reasons why we both get triggered. Um, when we have more uh, compassion for ourselves and our partner, we, can, um, we, we always aim to see the scenario from our partner's eyes and understand how they view the situation. Because um, I always say there's uh, three sides to every story, each party's perspective and then the truth or each, each party's truth, and then the actual truth. Um, <clears throat> all right, three, focus on things that you have control over. If you feel like it's your partner's fault that some things are happening, think about ways you can change this without changing your mate's behavior. To accomplish this, you may have to alter the way you're thinking about circumstances. Instead of thinking something like my spouse is spending all of our money, try to figure out how to start budgeting and start, and this way you can start making sure that you um, aren't contributing uh, in a negative way to the financial practices, or maybe you can jump on and help out. Now, if your uh, spouse doesn't want you to, that's another hurdle you have to jump, but I digress. Also, don't take things personally. Sometimes you might think your mate is doing things on purpose to upset you or, or um, to make you blame them. There's a good chance that many of the things that uh, they're doing right now might get on your nerves, um, but they're actually doing it on accident or absent-mindedly, certainly not intentionally, intentionally or maliciously. You can't expect your partner to know what you want from them unless you express it. If you haven't done that, you shouldn't take their actions personally unless they've done it in spite of uh, post-communication. So once you tell somebody an expectation, um, then they don't meet it. Okay, now you can start thinking, well, Jesus, this intentional, malicious, you know, yada, yada. Until then, they're not a mind reader and, um, <clears throat> and they might not know your standards. If you find that they are, um, like I just said, uh, doing things malicious, then you have a bigger mountain to climb. Also, remind yourself that your partner is not you. Um, sometimes all it takes is a little shift in mindset. Accepting that your partner is different from you can be an important and it can be very important in reframing. I just got done talking about the differences of communication, and this is a difference in every way. The way my spouse loads the dishwasher, I, 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 I literally could, could, well, let me be nice. <laughs> it makes no sense to me. It's aggravating. It's, it's, it makes zero sense to me. But, okay, I have to realize that's not how I do it. And unless I want to load the dishwasher all the time, let me just smile and say thank you. Um. Repeat to yourself, my partner is different, not necessarily wrong, um, even though it is wrong the way he's loading the dishwasher, but that's another story. Then when you uh, have a calm discussion, try to understand where your partner's coming from. Um, if you don't, it's okay to end the discussion by agreeing to disagreeing <clears throat> plenty of times. And I've been married over 20 years, all to the same person, married once. Um, I can't tell you how many times we've agreed to disagree. Practice gratitude. I can't even tell you and emphasize how much weight this has. The antidote to criticism and blame is to choose to focus on seeing the good. Um, so what in fact um, they're doing or what they're saying or who they're trying to be, um, that's what we need to focus on. Because, you know, I even tell my kids all the time, listen, don't necessarily focus so much on what people say rather than what they do, because, you know, actions speak louder than words. And um, also look at behavior. Over, I'm sorry, look at intentions over behavior. Behavior is, is has a tendency to always disappoint us. 
But if you look at people's intentions, you know, you can get more of an understanding of why people behave the way they did. When everything's annoying, um, that's a litmus test that's telling you you're not focusing enough on positive output. So practice gratitude. Think about all the different things you love about your partner, your significant other, or if the betrayal happened with your mother or your spouse or, or your boss or what have you. Um, think about all the, the, the positive attributes this person has. Um, and if possible, express appreciation and gratitude. And if you can't, let's just say they're dead, you're not talking to them anymore, they moved across the country and you don't have their context, then journal what you appreciate about them because this will definitely internally change um, who you are. When you constantly see your partner in a good light or anyone for that matter, you're less likely to um, point the finger and blame. You're less likely to criticize and to lash out in hurtful ways. So overall, it's important to know that nobody ever wins the blame game because if you're in a healthy relationship, there's no such thing as a winner and a loser. When you work together as a team and look out for each other, even during difficult conflicts, you both come out as winners.